Hello highlighters and now that we basically set our hair and in the first video I showed you how to do that this is a continuation now I'm going to do my brush out and how I get my waves to shape how I want them and what the set will look like. So you can see everything's pretty intact. They're starting to fall a little bit. That's not a big deal. That could have just even been from kind of them being in the cap a little bit. So I'm going to start unrolling them. But before I do that, I'm going to take some products. So this is the dry texture spray from Morbe, And I'm just going to put it right actually up at my roof. And I just do it in between the rollers. I don't want a ton of product in it. And it's not a dry shampoo, it's a texturizer. So that will help me once I shake it out to get some grip up there. And if I need to add more product, I can. From here, I'm just gonna take my rollers out. And when I do this, I'm unrolling them. I'm not just pulling them straight from the hair and trying to maintain the curl. I take these off if I feel when I'm unwrapping them that something's getting stuck in them, which can happen when they shift. So if that's a thing for you, you can remove them and then just clip them back on. For the back, I start on the bottom and work my way up so that way they don't get tangled with each other. So that's just a preference. You can start wherever you want when you're unwrapping them. And as you can see, it's really, really curly and that's okay. We'll take care of that. So the first thing I'm going to do without any product or anything is I'm just going to shake them up and just kind of break them up and pull my fingers through them. The reason why it's nice to have it more curly than not is so that way your set will actually hold while you're doing this. So once I've kind of had everything a little bit on the more broken upside and <laughs> it's super kind of, a di it's a very dated hairstyle right now. I'm going to start with my brushing. So the first thing I use is this guy. This is basically a Mason Pearson knockoff. Uh, if you don't know what a Mason Pearson is, go ahead and Google it. They're incredible brushes, but I don't have the finances for that and I'm not going to spend $200 on a brush. Uh, so what I'm gonna do actually is I flip my head over and then I brush everything out from the bottom. So once I feel that I got it all pretty much worked out, and again, like when I'm brushing like this, I'm taking it and it's going along all of my scalp. So that way everything is mixed up from the bottom to the top. You don't have to do this. I do this because I like it a little bit fuller and this helps it get a little bit fluffy. So then once I flip it around, it looks something like this. And from here, I can start my shaping. And as you can see, it's already starting to come together. Feels a little staticky, which is strange because my hair normally doesn't get a lot of static, but here we are. All these classic sets are is just brushing over and over and over. So now that I feel like everything's pretty broken up and any of like the lot of body or product that I have in it is dispersed, it's not just in these mats anywhere. I'm gonna take a little bit of pomade uh, I use a Suavecita pomade. Uh, it's water soluble. Why? One of the reasons I like it. So is Layrite in case you were kind of dabbling in different pomades. Uh, this one's just easy for me to pick up. So that's why I started doing it. 
and I'm gonna take just a little bit on the back of my knuckle. The reason I know the back of my knuckle is because I've got these nails and I don't wanna gouge it. And then I'm going to emulsify it really, really well. I also get it between my fingers, so that way when I start running it through, uh, the product gets kind of wherever my hands are. I'm gonna start on the bottom, and then I'm just going to gently put it all the way through. And now we're gonna continue on with more brushing. I'm gonna swap into a Denman now. The reason why the teeth are a little bit more defined and I won't get so poofy as much as I'll start getting more of a sculpted look. Brushing is to get the set to relax, to get everything where you want it. The back is always a little bit tricky. I keep my back in a pretty long horseshoe, which can make it a challenge for me because my arms physically aren't long enough to get back there to always get the shape that I want. And if you think pulling out your curl or pulling on your curl like this will just pull it completely out, it shouldn't. If you have a strong set, that goes even with heat styling. <clears throat> if it's small enough and it was set strong enough, it's really pretty impossible to break that hydrogen bond with just brushing alone. Turn around so you guys can kind of see what it's starting to look like. So here we have in the front, not really polished or anything like that. In the back, I can feel it's probably flipping out more than I would like. And then in through the sides, it's not nearly behind the ear how I like to wear it. It is coming together. So now I'm gonna take my comb. This is just a rat tail comb. It's got finer teeth. And this is where, again, I'm gonna start doing more detail work. So I like this to come behind my ear. So I'm gonna pull it behind my ear and I'm gonna start the shape through there. What you can do as well is you can take a duck bill, pull out that tension there and clip it down while you're working. Tangles right here. I'm not gonna start and pull through them. I'm gonna go back from the bottom and then pull them out gently. The goal is to not break or rip my hair while I'm doing this. And then I'm gonna start sculpting the front. Starting to look about right. I have Suavecita hairspray here. I'm going to just spray a little bit on it. This is a fairly good working spray, which means it won't break or crack on you while you're doing this. And it's easy to mold, so you can keep kind of playing with it. It doesn't get stuck really in one shape. And then I'll just keep playing with it and playing with it and combing it until I get where I want. The other thing you can do, is you can take duck bills and then place them in the back. I don't do this a lot uh, because it's just time consuming. <laughs> But if I was really going for a style or if I had an event like Viva, I usually clip my hair while I'm working. And what it'll do, it'll maintain a shape and kind of hold things in place as a little place marker while you're working. And what I do when I'm doing this number is actually kind of just pushing it back up to where I want it. And I'm starting my sculpt from the top down. So I'm not worried about things really right here as much as I'm worrying about getting the top to kind of lay how I want it to. Uh, the other thing is, so I'm really weird about this. A lot of people aren't, it's really up to you. My hair is so fine that my ear will stick through it. It drives me bananas. It's the number one thing I look for when I do my hair and when I check the back. So if that's something that bothers you, if you clip, just know you'll probably see your ear and then when you remove the clip, you won't see it anymore. So if that's a pet peeve for you, that's something that I deal with and uh, it's not that big of a deal once you remove the clip. If the clip is removed and you still see your ear, you can kind of go ahead and just adjust it. Uh, some people like to curl, or excuse me, tease not curl, they like to tease their curls. I don't tease normally everything down. Like what you'll see is this, and then they'll smooth it all out. Uh, totally a good method. I just, 
don't do it. I don't think my hair needs it once I've worked with it enough. It's really up to you and how much grip you need. I'm not worried about the bang right yet, so that's why I'm not bringing that into the mix. This piece I always have difficulty with like clipping because I want it in a certain spot, but hair is like, nah, you don't have enough hair to support that spot. What are you doing? And it also feels really loose. And that's just a mental thing. It's not that loose. So what I'm doing when I'm doing the clip all the way down is clipping what would be kind of the where the ridge would come to. Like I said, I don't normally clip just something to show you and demonstrate you like to you guys so you can see maybe it's a good option for you. So I'm still brushing and still combing it. And no joke, sometimes it is not unusual for me to take 15 to 20 minutes just to comb it out. Now you might be thinking, well, if you just used a bigger rod or did whatever, you wouldn't have to do that. It doesn't really work like that. And the reason why is because if you get the curl too loose when you start to do this and you start to do all this brushing and sculpting and placing it, it'll just, that will be enough to pull it out. So you really wanna make sure that when you are setting these hydrogen bonds and the curl pattern in the hair, it's tight enough. So it's starting to loosen up and relax more where I want it. And I think I have been probably brushing it for about 10 minutes now. As you can tell, I ditched the clips because it wasn't exactly where I wanted it. So I'm still kind of doing it until I get it situated. And now that I think it's about starting to be able to be more sculptable, I'm actually gonna swap into this. This is a teasing brush. And you're like, oh my God, how many brushes do you need for this? You really don't need this many, but the more tools you have at your disposal, the easier it is to do anything. You wouldn't expect a carpenter to only have a hammer. So that's kind of the same concept. So with this, instead of trying to go all the way through the curl, I'm now gonna just be focusing more on the top and the middle layers. And I'm just going to be smoothing. One of the reasons why I turn my head like this so far, I do this even when I'm just styling without being on camera, is one, it misses my shoulder a little bit better and kind of gets me around my ear. Also, when I'm looking in the mirror and I'm starting to do this, I have a tendency to pull hair from the back forward and shift where I want those waves to be. So by doing this, I'm able to keep it more in line for where it wants to actually go. So that's why I do that on each side. It also allows me to kind of pull this length down a little bit so it's in a place I can reach it. And I'm just kind of feeling for it a little bit. And you can wear this pretty much two ways. A lot of girls like to kick it out uh, and wear it kind of fluffy on the bottom. Fluff curls, totally accurate and totally normal. I like mine just a little bit more polished, but sometimes when the set's too strong, I don't even, I'm like, all right, that's the end of that. I don't need the horseshoe. I'm gonna just like not fight it all the time and I'll wear that on day two. Sometimes it just depends on how strong the set pattern was. This one's really, really good. I left these rollers in for almost 24 hours. So as a result, these bonds aren't going anywhere. All right, so now that I just rebrushed and sculpted it for probably about another 10 minutes, and all I was doing is brushing and tucking it under. I'm gonna show you what the back looks like. So this is probably the best way my cut is highlighted. It's more of a horseshoe. And as you can tell, there's still swing in it and everything is just tucked under, just brushed and tucked. And that's how I get it to roll. I'm growing my hair out more. Uh, if I wasn't, I would probably get it cut to help this style a little bit more. This was a little bit more of an obstacle with how long it was, but that's basically how you do it. It's a little bit more Dita inspired and stuff like that. Um, 
I'll be doing another tutorial later on how I do the back much more quickly for like work and just make it all like fluff curls and then move on from there. And then now we're gonna get into the front. So as you noticed, everything is almost starting to take shape, but it's not entirely where I like it. So I'm just gonna brush to the front, let it do its thing a little bit. I like these to come forward more. And this is pretty much exactly how I did the back. And that again, I don't wanna fight with it a lot. So if I'm pulling it too far forward, I then kind of pull it back to see, and it pretty much just went into shape all on its own. So I'm gonna just about leave it alone. I want right here to have some sort of shape. So I'm pulling that through. I'm gonna wrap it around that. I don't like gaps in my style. So one of the things I'm looking for is like this back here, I can see through it. So I wanna make sure that I comb that down and get it as covered as possible. Just those weird little things. Swap back into my rat tail because I want a little bit more definition and some more tension. I think that's pretty good because that's just a curl. It's not being able to see through. I don't think at least no, it's not. It's not part of that. I can't really see that far here or there in the mirror behind it. So I'm like, ah, and then into my bang area. So yes, I put some of that texture spray in when I had the rollers in, it's still in there. And you can tell I have a lot of height up here, which is why I don't, uh, do a, like that's why I use the pink ones up front, the grippy rollers, and because I don't like a ton of curl, I just more want body. So what I'm going to do is start over near my part line, going to split it, make it even, I'm going to tease. When you tease, it's like whisking eggs or a C even, but you don't go. Cause that causes a lot of stress on the hair and it also pulls it out as it's working. And then I'm going to bring these two pieces together and I'm going to tease, tease. And then once I get here, I'm going to put it together and lock it. And then I'm going to go over to this section and you notice I'm kind of over directing. And uh, that's because <laughs> I wanted to do that. So I'm going to take, my smoothing brush or my teasing brush again. Oh, why didn't I use this versus this? Uh, this I can just get in a little bit better. If you're nervous about teasing and aren't really good at it, start with this and then graduate to a comb. That's all. So the goal here is to not disrupt all my teasing, just smooth out the top. Usually when I'm styling, this may be the only place I use a clip. So I'm gonna put my hand here like that, like a really awful salute. And then I'm going to brush this forward on top of it. And that helps give me my wave. Again, even when I'm in the mirror, this is what I check for, that little gap. I don't like it. That's about right. Let's take my clip. I'm gonna put it right here. You see sometimes people put it in up here. I put it in right at the base because that's where I want it to hold and have that height. Maybe fiddle with it a little bit more. Take the end of this and just kind of tuck all those places under. Then I'm going to take my hairspray and do a light spray. I'm going to use the bottle instead of my hands so my hands don't get sticky. Most all hairsprays are put in a titanium bottle for the sole purpose of using the bottle to slide over your hair so they're hairspray resistant. They should not get caught if the bottle is clean. And then even through here, what I can do is spray some, put the bottle in the ridge and then push up into it to get it to hold.
right here it's poofing more than i like i said in my wrapping video that i don't like it to have volume right there it's just personal it's not a style thing so i'm gonna take a little bit more pomade i'm gonna emulsify it i'm not just gonna glob it on and then i'm gonna kind of work it into there I'm gonna take my comb and really push it in and cause some tension. I could always put a bobby pin back there. I don't like the way bobby pins feel right behind my ears, which is why I don't. Again, that goes back to more just my hair being a little bit on the finer side and I just feel it a little bit more. Uh, I don't use bobby pins normally in my hair. So those are quirks, little quirks that like I learned to just live with it. So because I don't wanna pin it, I know I'm, I'm going to get some height. I'm. I'm learning to accept it. It's just a matter of I can still get it pretty controlled to where I'm happy with it. And that seems to be about right because I like the, the juxtaposition of how flat this is to how much volume that has. So I don't like really symmetrical hair. That's also why it's going to be really hard for me to do the tutorial on victory rolls because I don't really like victory rolls. But we'll get to that later. And I think that's about it. Just a nice little spray again. Let me put my glasses on, see how bad the flyaways are, because I can't tell. Oh, hey, that's not too bad. I'm going to clip. Here's the thing. When you're removing clips in a style, click them out. The reason why they get stuck on any little hairs, you're going to pull your style. You don't want to do that. That seems to be good. Not too much light coming through it. My hair is on the finer side, so I know it's not going to be perfect but I don't want it to be absolutely terrible either and yeah again still even with this I'm not worried about brushing or combing through it I'm trying to find where the holes are right here and that's better And then there you have it. So on from the side, all the way into the back. And everything connects pretty smoothly. Like I said, this is just one way of brushing out. I'll be doing different variations of the same set in the future. This is just the first one and probably my preferred style overall. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more good stuff. And I'll see you next time.